Across Ireland, 98,000 homeowners are in mortgage arrears. 17,000 of those are now being brought to court by the Irish banks. Very nervous. Um, woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, sort of going through things in my head. Uh, it's quite an intimidating process. This is not a job for me, you know. I, I'm a midwife, I don't operate in these circles. I don't particularly understand the jargon. The worst case scenario is that the judge effectively drops the hammer and issues a repossession order on my home and my son's home. In the last five years of the boom, mortgage lending by Irish banks rose by 200%, from 44 billion euro in 2003 to 128 billion euro in 2008. To do this, Irish banks themselves borrowed to similar levels on the international markets. Property prices skyrocketed and bank shares trebled in value. And then the bubble burst. Kira O'Reilly has worked full time in the health service as a nurse and midwife. So this is my home. In her 40s, she lives with her son Tyg, a student in their Dunny Carney home on Dublin's north side. Uh, here's the sitting room. Um, I can't do an awful lot of work on the house at the moment because I don't know what's going to happen with the house. So I've had like I was left with this house the way it is and then the roof started leaking two years ago so I had to get the roof pulled and a new roof flat roof put on top of that and I, th I, I just can't bring myself to invest any further in it until I know what's happening with the situation and these are my dogs Reuben and Buzz in 2006 Kira and her husband took out a joint mortgage with EBS to buy their house. Together with Kira's son, they lived here for two years before the marriage broke down. When he exited, um, I was left in a position where my whole salary was going to make the repayments on the mortgage and I had virtually nothing left. And that's why I went to the banks and had a meeting with them and explained that we had separated, we were trying to work things out and could we have some more time and reduce the payment on the mortgage. At that point, the bank manager said yes. And then within six months, the bank offices were writing to me, like uh, looking for more money. And I just, I couldn't get more money. So I was paying, you know, a thousand euros a month and in the meantime, the mortgage was going into arrears and the, the, the bank's arrears support unit were writing, to, you know, sending me letters saying it's going into arrears. Um, and the whole thing just snowballed after that. Like it became really, really hard emotionally just to cope with all of this and raise my son and deal with the teenager and school and work. I just found the whole thing really, really difficult. Just, um, I, and I, I felt really, really bad that I had ended up in this situation and I was trying to support my son and I felt like I'd let him down. And I suppose I keep fighting as well, like because, uh, you know, I worry about where I'm going to home them. If, if, if I lose the house, what becomes of my dogs? because it's going to be very difficult to get a place with these two. Sit down. For five years after the breakup, Kira continued engaging with the EBS, updating them on her family situation and making repayments on the mortgage. Then, in November 2014, she received a phone call from a senior official in EBS headquarters. 
he said, we're going to come after you for the arrears on the property and you can go after your husband um, in court. You can take him to court for the other half. And I, I was just astonished by that. I made it clear to the banks from the onset that I was here to communicate with and to reach some sort of equitable solution for everybody in this situation. And now they were telling me that they were going to go after me again. And I was just, um, that, that, that was the, the straw that broke the camel's back. That's where I just thought, this, that's enough. I cannot actually just allow this to happen. Despite engaging with her bank, in the last year, EBS has taken Kira to court several times seeking to repossess her home. Looking back on it, I feel like I was deliberately allowed to go into free fall with the whole thing. And they were just waiting for the arrears to reach a certain point. And then here comes the documents about repossession. Repossessions are happening in every city and town across Ireland. After Dublin, Cork has the second highest number. Gillian, who did not want to be identified, is a separated mum in her 40s. She lives with her children just outside Cork City. In 2008, Gillian's husband left her. He stopped contributing to their joint mortgage and now has no contact with the family. As a single parent looking after children under 18, Gillian can only work part-time. As a result, she has not been able to service the full mortgage and has fallen into arrears. I know my house will be very obsessed. My children don't know yet. They don't know what's going on. And I constantly live under such pressure that you're trying to pretend the whole time that everything is okay. And it's not. Well, I couldn't keep up with the full mortgage repayments. So at one stage, I came to an agreement over the phone with the bank that I will pay the amount I'm still paying today, basically. The reason I'm making the repayments, I, I want to prove to the bank that I am trying as hard as I possibly can. Despite engaging with her bank and continuously making reduced payments, Gillian has been taken to court by the bank seeking a repossession of the family home. I have been getting letters for a while. Um, I've gotten solicitor's letters from the bank saying vacate the house, basically leave, um, letters like that. You actually dread the postman, you dread the phone ringing. You don't answer it anymore if it's not a number that you know. You, can, you can't keep living like this. It is so horrible. My health is suffering. I feel so sick all the time. I'm constantly worried. I don't sleep. My head never stops. I, I don't have life. I don't really live. I exist, basically. Gillian's fear is what will happen to her family if the bank succeeds in repossessing her home. When you tell people, they say, oh, but they're not going to throw you out on the street with your, your children. Actually, they are. And they tell you, but the council is going to have to house you. It's not. There are no other accommodation options for me. There is, there is, I'm, my only option for other accommodation is to split up my children. That's not an option. No. The scary part is they might not even want to be with me when this happens to them. I really don't want to face my kids and tell them we've got nowhere to go. It's not just homeowners who are affected by repossession. Tenants are too. In Abbey Leaks, County Leash, 32-year-old Julie Brennan and her husband David have five children under the age of 16. As a result, Julie is kept busy as a full-time mum, while David works as a road worker with Leash County Council. The couple are both from the county and their children attend local schools. Unable to afford to buy a house, 
they've had to move into four different rental properties in three years. In 2014, Julie agreed a long-term let with a landlord in an estate outside Abilix village. One year after moving in, however, they were contacted by an agent for the receiver saying the bank had taken over the property and demanded they vacate within 35 days. And on the 14th of August, I received a phone call from D&G Kelly, the secretary in there, to tell me that, I'm very sorry, Julie, the bank have instructed us to sell the property and you'll receive a notice to terminate your tenancy. Write your name on the top, hon. Julie and her husband, David, are now facing an eviction with nowhere for their family to go. There's very few options out there for my family at the minute. To go to an agency and look for rent, the prices were crazy. It's not feasible for my family to pay any more than what we pay at the minute. You know, the cost of living has gone up almost by 50% in my house. I remember when I used to be able to go and do my grocery shopping for 140 euro. Now I go do my grocery shopping and it's definitely costing me nearly 200 euros just to provide food alone. It, it's very hard to manage this, so that's why we couldn't see it feasible to work around our income to find alternative accommodation for a higher rental than what we're paying at the minute. That's good sharing, isn't it, Evan? The family are ineligible for local authority support. I applied to Leash County Council to go on the local authority housing list for my family, that we could maybe possibly get a secure and stable home for our kids. And we exceeded the threshold limit to be on the Leash County Council housing list by, by a very small amount. And because we can't turn to Leash County Council, we now cannot go to Clues, we can't go to Respond, we can't go on the HAP scheme. You must be on local authority housing to avail of any of the other sources that is out there for my family. So I sit waiting with anxiety and worry every day as to when this letter will come to put my family to the road because basically we have nowhere else to go so that is where we're going to have to end up. Dublin. It's the day before Kira is due in court to face her bank's barristers. It will be her fifth time taking on her bank. Hey Jack, Hi. how are you? Good, how are you? Grand. And tall. Today, however, life must go on, and she's making a routine visit to one of her expectant patients. So a baseline is starting to establish itself, you know, the actual working baseline of the baby's heart. For Kira's client, Jacko, this will be her first home birth. You know, home can be really anything, really, you know. It could be one room with a bed in it or a mansion or a cave or whatever. Once it's comfortable, once you feel kind of secure, safe. <laughs> In the last 18 months, the Irish banks have brought 17,000 court applications against households in mortgage arrears. Earlier this year, Gillian was taken to court by her bank for the first time. I was in court in March. It was absolutely terrible. It was, I was shaking from head to toe. You're sick before you go in. You're sick after you come out. There was 96 cases, 96. I thought everybody would be crying and it's just shock. It's just, it's desperation, basically. It's complete and utter desperation. People just went straight in, all sat there, waited for their names to be called and their cases proceeded. This was not just all young couples, there were elderly people there, there were people of all ages and everybody was in trouble. I actually, <laughs> at one stage, you actually physically, physically I felt like the ground was coming up to meet me and I couldn't breathe. Walking out of there with an adjournment was, as you can imagine, it was a relief. But the, 
it never goes away because it's coming back again. Do you understand? And my situation isn't changing. In Dublin, it is the morning of Kira's court appearance. Just 30 minutes after going into the four courts, Kira emerges. The judge has issued a repossession order on my home, on my son's home. So I don't know what I'm going to do about that at the moment, but I'm just in shock. What is even more distressing for Kira is that her court case was heard yesterday without her being present. I had noted with my, my colleague that it was the 4th of November. I noted it in my diary for the 4th of November. But it appears that the court case was heard in my absence yesterday on the 3rd of November. All I know is I've just been up in the um, circuit court office and they say that there's a stay of three months on that. I don't even know what that means. I don't know if somebody will show up at my door. I don't know if they can. I'm going to appeal it. You know, I'm not, I'm not willing to let this go. It's my home and my son's home, and I've worked for 25 years in the health service as a nurse and a midwife, never taken any support off the state in my whole life. Why, why would I find myself in this position? And if I'm finding myself in this position, how many other people in the country are and not talking about it? Each week in district courts across Ireland, hundreds of homeowners are going through the same experience. No town, county or age group is exempt. Today, at Ennis District Court, 144 homeowners have been served. For many, they are unable to afford a solicitor to represent them. Volunteer anti-eviction groups show up to offer their support and counsel. Uh, looking at the list, there's probably over 60 that it's their very first time um, coming here. Uh, probably six out of the 60 will show up. Um, the others just won't uh, come, they're drained of the much required energy uh, to even face this. Many have, are going through huge levels of emotional pain. Um, you'll find that many of them have um, gone along the train of thought of suicide. As the morning unfolds, litigants are summoned one by one to face the court registrar and the bank's barristers. Afterwards, some were willing to tell their story. Over a two-year period, I have tried con constantly, constantly to speak to the bank, to talk to the bank, to sit down with the bank, to try and, and resolve these issues in the best way possible. I'm not trying to get away with anything. I'm not, you know, I want to do the best that I possibly can, but I don't want to lose my little home. There's 125,000 homes in, in trouble now, and that's central bank figures, 125,000 homes. So if you allow four people per home, and even if you were to say that 10 people directly are affected by that home because everybody is a mother and a sister and whatever, that's, that's 1.25 million people that will be displaced or upset by, by uh, eviction. 
we took out a small mortgage with the first active to do necessary work on the house, which is very old. And half of that was paid back and I was getting into trouble and tried on three separate occasions to talk to First Active. They didn't want to know. And the next thing I had dealing with Ulster Bank. And say, on the phone, I find it very hard to understand what they're saying and they speak so quickly and it is all very technical for me anyway. And I've tried writing, I've sent registered letters and never got a reply back. And as they say, you, you try making a phone call, you'll get somebody different each time. For many, an adjournment will buy time to keep their home. Well, it's, it's adjourned for six months to give me time to get ready for these payments to be made and for to get my documentation. Now, I've obviously, I was in a position that I have a pension coming, I'd be able to hand over 20,000. Like, if I could keep my home and my independence as long as I can, that would be my main issue. The banks, they've, they soon forgot the help they got from the Irish taxpayer. So they won't, they, might, they can take a house that will not drive me into an early grave. At the end of the Ennis court sitting, one man handed in the keys of his home. He cannot, however, escape his arrears. Unlike the UK, where you can declare bankrupt in 12 months, under the Irish Personal Insolvency Act, discharge will take a minimum of three years. In Dublin, Kira is still coming to terms with the news that her home will soon be repossessed. Hey, so I didn't sleep well last night at all. I woke up at three, three o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock. I'm just uh, a ball of frustration today. <laughs> um, I'm just about to go for a run. I'll be better after that. 2009 until now and ongoing I'm in court the whole time pursuing uh, a divorce constantly from 2009 until November 2014 and then in court for repossession hearings the more people I talk to the more I see that they are just being crushed by banks and it's just not right morally it's not right Anyway, I'm going for a run because I'm just going to explode in a second. <laughs> since the court granted a repossession order against Kira's home. Facing an eviction and unable to afford a solicitor, she has come to a volunteer centre in Dublin city centre called The Hub to research how to fight the case herself. Run by like-minded volunteers, lay litigants come to The Hub Ireland to share information and experiences with each other. Its coordinator is Byron Jenkins, whose own business was foreclosed by his bank. Yeah, it's funny, when you come in first, you're so terrified by everything, and you're like really overwhelmed and in a crisis situation, really. I'm always meeting people down here who are either, you know, two or three steps ahead of me in the process and fighting more complex legal issues, and then they explain something to me so that I get some clarification around that issue. Um, or I'm meeting people who are just beginning the process and they're terrified. And I know what that's like, so I'll reach out to them. Byron, do you want tea? People are in crisis. You know, you see husband and wives coming from Donegal, Longford, Galway, Sligo, everywhere, really. 
um, and yeah. usually the the wife will talk um, as women are tend to be a little bit more verbal so they'll express what's going on and how they're feeling and usually the man is sitting there silently and I, I always feel very concerned about the men in that situation because you actually wonder how are they coping Byron is not a solicitor or trained in personal insolvency but throughout the morning at least 30 people visit the hub, each one seeking his counsel. She had full representation from oh, that, 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 listen, all the others. That killed us. Yeah. That killed us. This morning, Mary has travelled to the hub from Kells in County Meath. She is fighting to save her family home. My mum and dad worked hard and left that home to me. And I took out a mortgage, Jeff. 262,000 with Stepstone for the simple reason being we had other kind of debts as well and they said oh we'll just roll everything into one and I thought it was 800 a month to pay back and actually it was from anything from 1200 one month 13 and next 15 and next but now the it's working out I think at 305,000 that I'm owing them even though people I, I was paying what I could afford to pay, but it was still a mountain up. The rears was still a mountain up. You know, I can pay 700 a month, you know. Mary has come directly from the new appeals court. She had expected the judge to grant a repossession order, but that has not happened. I have been up to court, which they wouldn't give us any more... Um, appeal time, but they gave us three months to see can my son come on board to take a mortgage to buy my family home. At least the judges turned round and said, you know, we're going to give you three months to try to come to some sort of deal, refinance, maybe get the family involved, you know, and myself and, and Jim will, will lead you through that process and it will, we will help you every step of the way until we come to um, a, a conclusion, you know, um, that will be hopefully beneficial to you and beneficial to the banks. Yes, that's all I want. Yeah. With the court order to repossess Kira's home having been issued one week ago, she has 10 days to appeal. With the clock ticking, she must spend the full day at the hub to figure out how to fight her eviction. For those people being summoned by the banks to court or living under the threat of eviction, the levels of stress experienced are intense. The impact on mental health is huge, but stress is also a risk to physical well-being. In Cork, Gillian has not only been battling with her bank, she is in another fight. Basically, I feel like my body is disintegrating. And um, that is the only way to put it. I was diagnosed with cancer. And I said to the doctor, I said, I actually don't have time for this. And I didn't. I didn't have to have chemotherapy, just the radium. Um, all the way through treatment, um, people were saying, oh, you're great, you're, you know, whatever. And a friend of mine said, that probably is not a good thing that, you know, you never really addressed the cancer issue. And I said, but I can't. It's, it's way down my list of priorities. My cancer was less of a priority than my mortgage. In Abbey Leaks, Julie and her family have not heard from the receiver who repossessed her rented house. As a result, they don't know what will happen next and are living in limbo. I ran the receivers yesterday. You know, it's, it's five weeks before Christmas. I wanted to know, is there something there that's maybe giving me a heads up that they're going to send me an eviction order this week or next week or what's going on? So I rang and I spoke to the person with whom I've been dealing with it all the time with Grant Torrent and the receivers. And I basically was told there's no update. There is no instructions with anything to do with the premises and I basically was told, well, their only option is they need vacant possession of the house. And my answer, as it has always been since the 14th of August, was they will not get vacant possession. That is my home. 
With so much at stake, Julie has done her own legal research to find out exactly what her rights are. They've got to either issue me another termination to quit my tenancy, or they must issue me a new contract, which neither seem to be coming to me, so I don't know right now where this is going to go. For Kira, it's the end of a long day spent researching how to fight her eviction. She is still confused as to how her case was heard a day earlier than she had in her diary. Um, you believed it was on the 4th, yeah. and it was heard on the 3rd. Mm. OK, so we need to go back to the original court to get the recordings of that court and what was said in the court. With several days now lapsed since the judge ordered a repossession order, Kira is at a loss as to what will happen next. Yeah, I suppose I'm, I'm frightened, you know, I am frightened that something will happen and that bailiffs will arrive at my door at some point. Um, from what I understand about it, my understanding is limited. There's some kind of sign-off period on the repossession order, so it takes three or four days in the courts for that to happen. And then I have ten days in total from the sign-off to appeal the judge's decision. Today, over 60 people have either visited or contacted the Hub Ireland seeking help. Mental health is huge in this. It's probably the, 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 the worst of what's going on, you know. Um, and, it, and it filters down to every member of the family, right down to the kids. Kids are stupid. They know exactly what's going on. They see the pressure the, the, the parents are under. And, and relationships as well. Every second person coming through the door is separated, divorced or rowing, you know, um, over something that really wasn't their doing. One week after the judge granted a repossession order, Kira must decide whether she will tell her son, Tyg. I spoke to my son on the phone. Um, he's away at the moment, but, you know, he's only a young man. I'm not going to burden him with this too much, so I didn't tell him that there was a repossession order issued. For the 100,000 homes in mortgage arrears, this Christmas will be a bittersweet holiday. It's been two weeks since the court granted a repossession order against Kira's Dublin home. She has decided to appeal to the High Court and has been busy trying to get organised. This is my never-ending list of things to do. I'm really struggling with having to go back again to the Circuit Court Office and the High Court Office and get bits of paperwork and go down to the hub and do my work and look after the house. And just manage everything and try and tell myself that I'm doing a good job. I'm really trying. Gillian has been living under the threat of eviction. As a result, she is dreading Christmas and what might happen to her and her children. Every Christmas, I put this, the presents out and I pray, please God, let me be here again next year. And that's how I've lived every Christmas for the last few years. I don't have a plan for Christmas Day. I have a hope that I will be at home. I don't have a plan because I might not be. I don't know where I'm going to be. I haven't started shopping yet for Christmas. 
I don't know. I don't know what happens. I don't know exactly. When your house is repossessed, do they just come and take you out straight away? Because I can't leave until they do come and take me out. Because I've got nowhere else to go. And I really don't. So, when can they come Christmas Day? Can they, you know, I don't know. In Dublin, Kira needs a copy of the repossession order against her home to file an appeal. After much toing and froing with the circuit court offices, she has finally secured a copy. This is the the notice of repossession. Um, yeah. But when she read it, she was to receive a shock. It says that the execution for possession herein be stayed for a period of three months from this date. Well, by all accounts, from what I've heard, that's a really severe stay. That it has been up until now, you know, an eight-month stay to allow people to kind of uh, put in their appeal. <laughs> the thing about it is, you only get ten days from the from the date that this is made to appeal it in the High Court. Ten days. So this order was granted on the third of November, and then you have ten days. When did you receive that letter? I didn't. I just had to go to the circuit court office and talk to the clerks who didn't even know for a few minutes that this was granted and they had to go off and find it and then I had to get them to stamp it. So that's like 13 days later. I have to go into the circuit court office and hunt this document down. I think it's totally inhumane. Despite the long odds, Kira is determined to keep fighting. I don't know, I just, I, 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 how could I possibly just accept what they're saying and, and just roll over? I'm not going to do that. This is my home. This is where I've raised my son. He's gone to secondary school around the corner. This is his community. I, this is my community. I'm part of this community. Um, I have a pregnant client living across the road here. I mean, why, why on earth would I... Would I go along with it when I know that I've made such a supreme effort to engage with the banks? In County Leash, the village of Abbey Leaks is getting ready for Christmas. For the Brennan family, however, Things are not so straightforward. They have still not heard from the receiver if they must leave the property. Because we've received no response from the banks in any way at all, my family have decided we're going ahead with Christmas here in our home. We have continued to put up the decorations, the kids' stockings are hanging, lights are on, and we're ready for Christmas. They sent their Santa letters and they, they eagerly await the letter through the letterbox, unlike me who awaits a different letter in the letterbox. But hopefully I don't get that letter this side of Christmas. Despite Julie's experience over the last five months, she hasn't given up on the possibility her family might yet stay in the house. Well, I don't know what the banks are going to do in the new year, but I myself have made an early New Year's resolution because I can't live in this way. They're not knowing when is the day going to come, when is the sheriff going to come to my door, when is the letter going to come in my door. So I either want a new termination to quit my tenancy and proceed in whatever way it has to go, or else I want a new contract for my family. This is not a normal run-of-the-mill thing. This is something that happened due to a banking crisis. And it's very easy to say, this is the bank's asset and they need their money. Well, that is somebody's home. And that is probably what's holding some families together. People are in crisis here and families are losing parents to suicide and losing siblings because 
it is getting so difficult here. In 2010, the pressure nearly got too much for Kira. I'm, I'm quite a robust person. Um, I found myself in a situation where my mind was actually starting to formulate plans about taking my own life. You know, I don't even drink, but I was thinking, okay, just uh, go and get a bottle of vodka <laughs> and take some pills and go up to Hothead and throw yourself off Hoth Head and, and just be done with this pain. And at the same time, my rational mind was going, you have a son, you're, you know, you have responsibilities, you have a son, you have to keep going. Uh, you know, it's a retreat to come up here and see the sea and it makes me feel calm. But when I look back, over in the direction of my house. I think, where did it all go wrong? This is happening in so many homes across the country. Um, people are not sleeping at night time. People are highly distressed. Marriages are breaking down. Um, and people are in financial dire straits with no recourse, no real recourse. We, we don't know what's going on in people's homes. Um, people tend not to talk about this situation because they feel shame about it. Um, I feel shame about it. I had to tell my son last night, um, he's away in college, that an eviction order has landed in the post and I feel ashamed. I feel like I let him down. And the expression on his face um, really hurt me last night to see my son Trying to hide that from me, to protect me, just makes my heart break. I just, I explained that the, the courts had decided in my absence that an eviction order was warranted and that we would be leaving our home in January, possibly. And I told him not to worry that I'd take care of the situation. But that's not easy. It doesn't make it any easier to look at my son like that. He told me that I taught him not to worry about these things. So I'm not to worry about it. But I'm still his mother, so I'm still going to worry. <laughs> I mean, I don't understand how the banks were bailed out in this country by the taxpayers. And at the same time, the taxpayers, like me, are suffering in this situation and being treated, I think, really, really badly by the banks.